The Ionic Framework is a free and open source component library for building apps that run on iOS, Android, desktop, and web. Ionic allows you to write your app once using JavaScript and HTML, and then deploy to any of these platforms. It also comes with many nice UI components, a command line tool for creating apps, as well as various platform integrations. Today, we will be creating an Ionic app in Vue using the Vue 3 Composition API with TypeScript. We'll go over the basics of both Vue and the Ionic framework, and introduce you to creating an Ionic Vue app. This app will introduce you to basic navigation and creating Ionic components, as well as introducing you into Capacitor as a way of building native apps. If you're new around here, don't forget to subscribe and you can get a link to the full source code in the description below. To begin, let's install the latest version of the Ionic CLI. This will allow us to create a Vue project with the Ionic framework and configure all the dependencies we need. We can create our Vue app by running Ionic Start and specify a name and the framework type we will be using. What is great about Ionic is that out of the box, it comes with TypeScript support. This means we don't have to do any extra configuration to get TypeScript set up. Once everything has been installed, we can run our app in the web using Ionic Serve. Let's start by opening our project and viewing the main TS file found under the source folder. This is the entry point into our application, and you can see it has created a view instance as well as added the view router and Ionic plugins. In the router directory, you'll see something similar to any view router configuration, except we are importing the components from Ionic instead of the Ionic view router package. Under the hood, Ionic is using the view router dependency. So if you're familiar with view router, you'll be able to apply what you know to navigation in Ionic view. I already have a video going over the topic of using view router in view three. If you'd like to learn more, I recommend you go check it out. We can take a look at the app.view file, which imports some of Ionic's UI elements. Just like in any view application, in order to use a component, we must first import it. In the case of our app component, we're using the Ionic app and Ionic router outlet components. This is a basic example of a container component. With the router logic set, all it is responsible for is rendering a component that matches the given URL route. Let's take a look at the header.view file where we can actually start modifying the components. You'll notice it uses some of Ionic's components. Let's take a look at each of them and break them down. The ion page is the base component for all pages and includes some common building blocks of a full screen component like header, title, and content components. Ion header is a component meant to exist at the top of a page and it does not do much by itself aside from handling some flexbox based layout. Ion content, as its name suggests, the main content area for our page. It is responsible for providing a scrollable content that users will interact with, plus any scroll events that could be used in the app. In the ion content, we'll add an ion list and a much more involved ion item component. Inside, we'll create a checkbox, label, and badge to create a basic to-do item. Let's look at another component from the Ionic framework called floating action buttons. They are a nice way to provide the main action that is elevated from the rest of an app. We are setting its position with a vertical and horizontal attributes. We're also setting the render location to fixed with the slot attribute. This will tell the Ion Fab to render outside of the scrollable content in Ion Content. Now let's wire up a click handler to this so that it will navigate us to a new page. Once again, this is the same as if you were developing a to-do app using normal view. We'll get the router object with the use router function and then push slash new path to the redirect the user. Now that we have the pieces in place to navigate in our app, we need to create a new component and add the new route to our router declaration. Adding the new rule to our route is quite simple and all we have to do is set the path and component in the router array. With our route now having an entry for the route slash new, we'll create the component needed. New item will exist in the views folder. I'm going to fill out the component with some placeholder content, but you could make this interactive 
with API calls or user feedback depending on your application needs. Now, let's take a look at building our application as a native app. The great thing about the components provided by the Ionic framework is that they work anywhere, including iOS, Android, and web. To deploy to mobile, desktop, and beyond, we'll use Ionic's cross-platform runtime capacitor. We can add capacitor to our project by typing Ionic integrations enable capacitor. Now, we can add the platforms we'd like to deploy to by using the Ionic cap add. We use the standard nav IDEs to open, build, and run the iOS and Android projects. To build our Android project, we'd run Ionic cap open Android. Using Capacitor, we'll also add other APIs, such as the camera API. You can take a look at the documentation for examples. This guide covered the basics of creating Ionic View app, adding some basic navigation, and introducing Capacitor as a way of building native apps. If you're interested in learning more, I recommend you check out their documentation as they put a lot of effort into it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching. Hope to see you in the next one.